I sincerely thanks all the organizers for inviting me again for a, a, a online uh, lecture series. Last time also I took a, a, a class on, I think, approach to psychiatric social work intervention. I hope I am audible to everyone. Mm. Um, today we are going to discuss uh, a similar type of topic that is called psychosocial assessment. Um, I'm going to talk about psychosocial assessment in a very broad way because uh, when I discuss with the organizers, they told me that no, uh, there will be classes on uh, specific assessment like family assessment, then uh, uh, use of instrument in uh, clinical practice as well as assessment. So you are going to have specific classes on this kind of specific areas. Here I will be talking in a very broad way when we talk about psychosocial assessment, what are the areas that need to be covered? So this is going to be the outline of my presentation. I will briefly talk about what is psychosocial assessment and what are the features of psychosocial assessment. Then I will try to put forward a, a framework for psychosocial assessment in a clinical scenario in a very, very wide and open way. At the end, I would conclude the presentation with a case example. Uh, to give a, a, a practical idea about how to go about psychosocial assessment. Yeah. Let us dive into the details of the presentation. Yeah. What do you mean by psychosocial assessment? If you discuss with any of the uh, uh, person who is in the field of social work or psychiatric social work, even though uh, they will talk about psychosocial assessment, you will see that you know, there will be a, a little bit of disparity or, or differences of opinion with regards to what all things need to be incorporated in psychosocial assessment, what are the areas not need to be incorporated in psychosocial assessment. But in common, when you discuss with everyone, you will see that there will be some consensus on some of the areas we must address without uh, uh, like, you know, uh, any, 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 any doubt. So what is assessment? When you understand the term assessment, then it is easier for you to understand uh, psychosocial assessment. Assessment is integral part of our day-to-day -day life. Knowingly or unknowingly, we do so many assessment in our day-to-day -day life. For an example, you are going for a dinner in to a hotel and there will be a menu given to you and you go through the menu after going through the menu, you order an item, right? So in, in the hotel, you are actually doing a brief assessment about what are the items available in the hotel. There will be different items that are specifically served for breakfast, then lunch and dinner. So you, uh, you will have to find out what are the items available for dinner. If you're a vegetarian or non-vegetarian, accordingly, your search will vary. You will look at the price and quantity, sometimes you will discuss with the, the waiter about how much they are going to serve, how many pieces are going to be, and how many of you are going to there. Then you order an item. See, you, you make a very brief assessment in, in that situation to have an, an idea about it. Similarly, you when you choose a course, for an example, MSW or MPIL, you go through different institutions, and you talk to the people who are teaching there or who passed out from the institute and discuss with them about the course. Basically, you are trying to collect some information about the course and institution. Accordingly, you make a choice. Another example can be an online shopping where you go to the item, you, you read the um, reviews, comments, and you order an item. Lot of, see, why, what I'm trying to say is Every day we do a lot of assessment. When you, when, you, when you go back to the home, your parents do an assessment on you. They look at you and say that you, know, you become fat or you become thin, you become like you know, fair, you become dark. Uh, so, many, so they do an assessment and give an opinion. Uh, people tell you, the neighbors. Every day we do a lot of assessment, knowingly or unknowingly. Our life is totally dependent upon assessment. Is it necessary? I would say it is very necessary because our assessment will give you some basic information about the situation or the phenomena that will help you to make a reasonable choice or decision. Otherwise, you, if, you, if you make a very random choice, sometimes it may not be very appropriate to the situation. So assessment is that. 
when it comes to psychosocial assessment and do, uh, collect, collecting data or information about the psychosocial profile of the person is called psychosocial assessment eliciting information considered relevant to the issue which with which the client presents another way of looking at it understanding the psychosocial problem brought to our attention by the client what problem that person brought to us understanding the functioning of the person with regards to the problem his capacities the availability of outer as well as inner resources so psychosocial assessment can be understood in this way look at the problem functionality his capability and what are the resources available broadly you can and say that this can be called psychosocial assessment assessment depends upon the evidence collected through a positive relationship with the client the client's family and sources inside and outside the family too yeah uh, i will be talking little more about uh, with the relationship part of it but it is always a good idea to collect information from different and maximum sources i would say i will say why, why this is very important in psychosocial assessment we will be assessing about the illness maybe about the person family society so many things we assess in uh, in the psychosocial assessment it is a good idea to collect information from different sources because as i already told we are uh, we are trying to gather information about the about the illness uh, family maybe society so these are the things which are not very visible to anyone when you say family you cannot see a family you can see people so when they come together live together then we call it as a family similarly society mental illness you cannot see it so assessing them very objectively is a, a controversy is we we cannot very objectively assess this kind of phenomena because these are all very abstract terms or concepts you cannot do a lab investigation or mri to see what kind of harm it is let us do a mri or a blood test to see it is very difficult because these are all very abstract concepts so our assessment can go this side or that side so it, therefore it is always a good idea to collect information from the relevant sources in other ways always your assessment assessment or information you you are collecting as part of your assessment should be reliable as well as adequate these are the two terms you frequently hear when you present a detailed work up in your in the round or op, rounds or opd the the psychiatrist or the person listening your presentation will ask you like, is it reliable or adequate so make sure that you are getting a very reliable information how do you ensure reliability one of the ways to make reliability or adequacy is try to collect information from different sources and try to collaborate or synthesize then you get a very good information we uh, one of the uh, common uh, technique we use as a psychiatric social worker social worker for assessment or gathering information is called home visit we generally do a lot of home visit home visit will give you lot, very very nice and, and, and a different view point about the patient or the client uh, the background and social economy status the living condition collecting uh, a, a school report from the teacher or or, or employees asking opinion about uh, your client from the employer that will give a different picture all together what is go going on in the in the in the employment and job what is happening there so make sure that you try to gather uh, enough information so that you no know, your conclusions are uh, like you know are not wrong or uh, appropriate so make sure that you have enough information in your hand before going into the detail of psychosocial information i also would like to discuss with you about some of the features of psa psm in psychosocial assessment relationship otherwise it, uh, another term for relationship is called rapport a relationship between the worker and the client or the social worker or, or psw and the client or the family members are is very important because the the working relationship is the only medium through which either the, the help is rendered or, or the, the, uh, the information is collected all of you know it when you work when you are in an in an opd when you see a new patient and this person is very very new to you they will be reluctant to share most of the information and uh, suddenly when they reach into the consultant they will give a lot, a lot of information and you will wonder what what is it all about i ask them 
so many questions because they are not very comfortable with you they will be seeing you for the first time so therefore they will not disclose personal information with you. always try to establish a very good working relation with, with a working relationship with your client as well as the family members that will uh, foster or smoothen the process of assessment another major uh, point about uh, psychosocial assessment is assessment is always an ongoing process assessment you have to revisit your assessment as well as your conclusion or hypothesis frequently in the in the first first visit or first encounter with your client will give you some information then you may make some assumption about the problem or the dynamism of the problem why this problem happens and why it is continuing that is your assumption but over a period of time when you when you when you when you talk to the patient or, and or you try to gather information from other uh, multiple sources then you get a different picture or or the problem will be much clearer to you then you will realize that my understanding about the situation or the problem was not not adequate or clear, uh, correct i will have to make a, another assumption so make sure that you all, always revisit your assessment and finding based on the new information or the facts you collect in the process of assessment as well as the intervention when you carry out your intervention itself you make it new information that has to be uh, uh, utilized and revisit revisit and retest your assessment finding make sure that your assessment leads into some kind of hypothesis or assumption what do you mean by hypothesis or assumption or you can call it as a working hypothesis which means you the information you collected are put together you synthesize and you make some assumptions that is very important important otherwise you may not be able to make a meaning out of your assessment findings you have a lot of information about the patient about the family uh, about the illness about the background and what am i going to do with that why i am having all this information making a logical connection between all these facts will make a make a meaning of the information that will help you to form intervention so always it is a good idea to make synthesis inferences about your assessment otherwise the the informations are uh, like you know uh, not of use like you know you do a research you collect data and you have a lot of questionnaire with you and collected and a response you got from a thousand people if you do not put all those data into a, 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 a chart or a spss and make an analysis you may not be able to make a meaning out of it what is it all about? what am I, what is da- what this data is talking about that is called inference making or hypothesis making similarly in your assessment also you must use your professionalism intelligence experiences theories or evidences to make a hypothesis integrate multiple perspective into your assessment uh, uh, you must use different perspective psychodynamic behavioral uh, uh, person center different there are different approaches uh, um, uh, right this approaches so you you must utilize uh, maybe somebody will take uh, talk about that uh, later so i am not going to uh, spend a lot of time with the cost of that or uh, always it is a good idea to incorporate the patient's view point also into your assessment i will talk about that in little more detail use of scales uh, or instruments are um, appreciated because that will give you a very objective uh, information and assessment must be lead into interventions last point about uh, assessment uh, you all always should have an idea about what is an emic as well as ethic approach in assessment or uh, in intervention um emic approach is, is something you know, nothing but or taking a, a, a patient's stand uh, standpoint and what is their perspective their understanding their cultural view about the problems is also a good idea so you incorporate their viewpoint rather than you go with your ideas for an example if a one patient is coming and telling some problem suddenly you say that ah, you have depression but this is expressed emotion or uh, it is um, um, uh, uh, criticality that is an ethical approach where you are just labeling it from from the uh, uh, knowledge and understanding which you are having rather than understanding about why this is happening 
what is the person wanted to talk about and they, why expressed emotion present in the family is it because of the culture from where they are coming or the or, or the, the family atmosphere peculiarity of the family atmosphere so also trying to understand that perspective is called emic approach so try to integrate both emic and etic approach in your psychosocial assessment this is all about introduction about a psychosocial assessment theoretically what is it all about how what all things you like to incorporate what is the characteristics of it now i wanted to put forward a framework for psychosocial assessment in our clinical practice a very broad uh, framework i am trying to give it to you keep it in your mind so this will make sure that this framework will help you to uh, keep an idea in your mind so that most of the information you are covering in your psychosocial assessment or you are not you are not uh, forgetting or leaving uh, major domains in your psychosocial assessment so i would i would i would like to put these four domains in this way a person is coming to you with an illness so a person is coming with a problem or an illness so a person is coming and that person is affected with some condition and he is he is belongs to a family most of the time some of the family no, members no, also is following him and he is from a so, so uh, from a, a cultural or societal background that he was born and brought up in the family in the societal background each societal society has its own uh, cultural ideas resources available so therefore when a person comes this many things are coming to you it's not just a person it is not just an illness he is from a family background and from a, a society where he was born and brought up understanding these four domains will help you to make a very good conclusion about the person therefore when when i say carry out a psychosocial assessment the idea is look into a person the illness family as well as the society there can be many other thing that can be incorporated but uh, but uh, at minimum you may have to look into these four domains now i will go in little more details about these four domains first i was talking about the illness yeah a person is coming with a illness he is sometimes he may not have an illness sometimes he will have an illness okay so our assessment is to make a conclusion about whether this person is having an illness or not having an illness if he is having an illness what is it so you may be able to find out what type of problem this person is having like whether this person is having schizophrenia depression anxiety disorder because you must be having that skill also in your assessment process because illness also will affect in the management pro process or even or in your psychosocial intervention process there are illness specific intervention so it is always to it is also always a good idea to identify what type of problem this person is having for that you must know how to diagnose a person or minimum diagnostic criteria for schizophrenia depression or different there are different uh, uh, disease condition which are listed out in icd and dsm no you must be able must be familiarized with this kind of diagnostic criteria as well as the psychopathology for each di uh, diagnostic criteria then you may be able to understand what type of problem this person is having that will uh, the type of illness will affect in many ways because uh, i will talk about that later similarly you may be able to identify the severity of the uh, condition so even uh, depression so is it mild moderate severe based on the symptomatology or the functionality so that according to the severity of the illness we our intervention or management will vary so you may be able to identify understand the severity also similarly an illness will passes to different phases of also if a person is diagnosed with schizophrenia that the, the schizophrenia itself will be in a diff, it will have different phases he, the schizophrenia will, will be in the pro, prodromal stage acute stage stabilizing stage recovery or refractory phase you may you must have an, a, a skill or idea about what phases of the illness because according to the phases of the illness our management strategy will totally vary for an example if that person is in a prodromal phase what type of psychosocial intervention or services i can provide in the prodromal stage 
most probably what we will have to make you sure is like you know that person is getting an immediate medical attention so that you now we can prevent uh, of um, leading that at episode in a full blown acute phase there may we may not be uh, drawing and or trying so much of psychosocial individual intervention at the same time we may have to deal with the family in a little bit different way family will be in a to total chaotic stage and they don't know what is happening they don't know how to manage it so helping them to deal with that situation is maybe our intervention strategy see according to the phases our interventions may vary similarly that person is in an acute phase illness is in an acute phase where that person is having all the florid symptoms where the insight may be impaired in that case attempting some kind of individual intervention like you no know, psychoeducation cbt or any of type of intervention may not be appropriate because that person does you know i have a problem so they may not take your intervention in the right sense so attempting such kind of intervention during that phase may not be very appropriate but again planning some kind of family intervention may be appropriate maybe they came into the hospital uh, treatment is going on family other family members or children are left, left at home other um, uh, financial benefit so educating them all those things are very appropriate so according to the stages our intervention may vary on the other hand he is stabilizing symptoms are remitting in insight is improving uh, that is a time where you can think about attempting some kind of individual intervention symptoms remitted into recovery phase then you may have to plan intervention accordingly refractory phase then so understanding the illness and phases and severity of the condition is part of your assessment you cannot leave out the Ill Ill illness because we are in the field of psychiatry and persons are coming with a psychiatric or mental problem understanding illness and severity phases are very integral part of your psychosocial assessment but not just illness but this is a major part of your psychosocial assessment so when you do an a psychosocial assessment look into the illness this this areas of the illness is very important then comes the individual the individual is coming with a problem so what are the indiv the individual factors that we must look into or address when you carry out a psychosocial intervention the background and some of the childhood experience understanding some of the childhood experiences are very important in your psychosocial assessment the socio economic status residence place even during critical and sensitive period because when i say a, a critical and sensitive period there are some uh, there are something called critical and sensitive period in your in our life I, 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 these terms comes from a life course perspective critical period i will give an example of critical and sensitive period and understanding those kind of events that happens in critical and sensitive period give a very good clue about what is happening uh, what is currently happening to this patient or the client critical period i will give sim similar exam simple example like you now the the time frame immediately after the birth is is called a critical period because whatever happening those those periods are very critical that can have a long standing as well as life long effect on that person for an example during the birth the, the child did not um, breathe immediately that can have a, de a, a, a devastating effect on that person throughout his life like you know, that will affect the development process altogether so but uh, for an example i am in this age hold my breath for 30 seconds may not hold such a may not cause that that's much of consequences in my life right or we don't cause as structural damage to me so events happening during this, uh, uh, such kind of periods are very important sensitive period so adolescence can be called as an a sensitive period because events during happening during that phase will have a more impact than other phases so substance use uh, uh, parental deprivations many things can affect uh, 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 them similarly aversive uh, uh, even during childhood uh, abuses uh, deprivation single parenting those things can have an impact on the person that will make the person vulnerable uh, to develop many mental health problems 
So try to understand what is a background, what all things were happening, what were the childhood experiences of the person. Then it is also a good idea to understand the life events, major life events that happen to the persons. The so life events can be classified into positive and negative, entry and exit life events. And understanding their impact on the person also is a very good idea because many of the life events can work as a turning point in our life and that will decide the trajectory of our life and that can have positive as well as negative impact of the person. I'll give a simple example of migration. So you migrated to a different place that can affect you positively or negatively. I'll give an example of our place. Uh, uh, Manipal is a place where a lot of students migrate for study purpose. When they come to this new place, it's a, uh, the atmosphere here is entirely different. The culture is entirely different. Some people develop, uh, some students develop something called cultural shock where they are not able to inculcate or even digest the culture that is happening. So they will feel aloof, no support, no like you know, cohesive feeling. They are not able to gel into the group. Then they feel lonely, no support. They can develop any anxiety and many, 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 many other problems. Life events, sometimes life events can be a turning point in a positive way also. So understand what are the major life events that happen to a person and how it impacted and how that person coped with that. Another area that you can look into the, the personality as well as the coping style of the person. Uh, when I say personality, predominant personality traits and type of um, uh, uh, coping strategy that person is having, whether this person is probably a problem for focus, uh, focus uh, coping strategy or emotional focus coping or a healthy or unhealthy way of coping. So look into what kind of personality trait that person is having and what kind of coping strategy that person uses when there are an adversity or difficult situation arises. Similarly, it is also a good idea to look into the inside complaints and help seeking behavior of the person because uh, uh, that will decide all about whether this person wanted to continue, what type of services that person is looking for, and whether he's okay with uh, pharmacological or non-pharmacological interventions. So what kind of explanatory model that person is holding? Explanatory model in the sense, the, the, the person's understanding about the causes and the symptoms of the condition. We will have an, um, a, a, a psychosocial, sorry, bio, biopsychosocial understanding about the problem, but this person may have a different understanding because of which they may follow different uh, pathway as well as a treatment modality. So it is also a good idea to understand what uh, idea they are holding. Whether this is causing any disability to that person, the condition or the problem they are coming up with, with in the form of self-care, interpersonal relationship, communication, work, study, uh, avoidance. So how it, it will... Uh, that will give an idea about how severe it is and how much it is affecting the person. Then the broader, any other legal safety and welfare issue that person is having, uh, any abuses, legal issues, because many of the time they may get into some kind of legal problems and uh, and then we have to deal with things in a little different way. So always have a good idea. If there are safety issues, then we have to address those safety issues first and foremost. So have a broad idea about the person. Uh, so you know about this person and the areas of the person along with the illness. So now you know the illness and the persons and the important domains and area of the person. Next is family. So I was talking initially like a person is coming with a problem. So we talked about the illness or the problem person and he has a family background of, of a family is also accompanying. When you look into the history of psychiatry or mental health per se, many of the time initially in ancient time, family was considered as a cause of the mental illness. There were many theories or hypotheses, uh, 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 double bind communication, Marital schism and skews, schizophrenic genic mother. Um, so there were many theories assuming that and believing that family is the cause of mental illness. And later in these old theories were disproved. Now we consider family as a partners in the treatment process. So like mental health professionals, 
psychiatrists, psychiatrists, social workers, psychologists. Family also considered as a partner in the treatment process. We incorporate or involve family members in the entire treatment planning and execution. Because we, we design or plan a treatment pro, uh, uh, regime for a, for a client and family is executing the intervention because a patient or a client can stay in the hospital for a brief period of time one week one day two day one week maximum or one month maximum after after that the, the client is going to stay with the family and uh, studies have shown that now more than majority more than 80 percentage of the clients stay with their family members so family plays a very vital or pivotal role in the treatment process so incorporating them in the treatment process is very important. And family is a source of, of all sorts of support, primary, secondary, and tertiary, which is very spontaneous and most of the time free of cost. So incorporating and understanding family is very vital in our psychosocial assessment as well as intervention process. So what are the areas that you'll have to look into or how we can go about uh, psychosocial assess, uh, family domain in the psychosocial assessment? First and foremost, draw a three-generation genogram. So you have a pictorial understanding about the family. Then you try to collect the details about the family members or draw the current living arrangements and who all are staying together. So you try, try to focus more on the current living arrangement and who all are living together. Try to collect their details, their demographic details, their age, their occupation, um, and uh, so basic information. Look into any, uh, any family history of mental illness and any other illness in the family. So, the, and their treatment details that will give you some, some ways to go about the treatment. It is also a good idea to look into the explanatory model of mental illness in the family. How does the family conceptualize the problem of the person? What is the causes? What are the symptoms? What type of treatment they look into? Because you may have to incorporate that also in your assessment as well as management process, otherwise all your intervention may fail. So try to understand their explanatory models. Ask for what are the expectations from the treatment and look into who is primary caretaker of the patient. Even though there are family members, there will be one of one person who is in charge or, or taking in charge of the person in, in providing treatment, bringing for the follow-up, discussing with the treatment team and all. Try to collect their information and contact details if possible. Then some of the other details that you can look into. What is family's reaction to the client? How does the family react to or the caregiver reaction to the client? Which can be called as, another way of looking at it is called expressed emotion. Look into uh, the reactions, behavioral or emotional reaction of the family members to the pay the patients whether they are very critical they are hostile are they over involved with the client these are called uh, negative expressed emotion so if there are negative expressed emotion there is a high chance for relapses in the symptoms or they are very uh, positive and warm towards a person so look into those kind of uh, reaction of the family members towards the client how you can assess there are uh, structured and uh, semi-structured way of processing, something called five minutes, minutes speech sample, which you can practice in your clinical uh, uh, level where you ask the, ask the family members to talk about their, the client five minutes without interrupting. Then you look into the, uh, the, the comments that they are making. Accordingly, you can make an inferences. And there are specific scales that are available to look into the uh, expressed emotion in the family. So at least you uh, look into this uh, reaction of the family members. Then or, or you also look into the impact of the illness of the family members. How the illness is impacting the, in, uh, the family members. In the individual level, we assess the disability where how the illness is impacting the individual. Similarly, illness will have an impact on the family members. It can be uh, uh, attempted in another way called burden, whether the family is having any burden because of the illness, financial difficulty, disruption of family activities, uh, uh, leisure, disruption in the family, leisure, interaction, whether other family members are having any physical problem or mental health problem because of the illness. So look into those domains because 
sometimes you may have to intervene and uh, render services to the family members because family is in a weaker position so they are not may not be able to cater uh, or take uh, uh, services to the client or family can on the other hand family can become a hindrance in the process of treatment when they are having all this problem family when they are uh, if they are having a negative reaction or negative expressed emotion family can be a risk factor and may not be a protective factor so identifying and addressing those thing will be crucial in your treatment process so look into this domain if you want to dive into more detail or or nitty critics of the family then you may have to go in detail about the detail assessment about the family dynamics it is uh, suggested only if you actually wanted to do some kind of um, um, in depth family um, intervention or family therapy per se or else um, 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 uh, superficial understanding about the family dynamism is sufficient enough otherwise if you see there is some problem that is go going on in the family in the in the, in the dynamics in the communication and interaction process then it is also a good idea to understand the different dynamics or different domains of the family dynamism i think you will have a different uh, lecture uh, uh, specifically focused about family dynamism then also and then you assess about it and make an, an idea about what is going on in the family if there is something called family interaction pattern scale you can utilize that to have an assessment about the family's uh, 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 dynamics so then uh, when you collect this much of information you have a, a, a very uh, fair grip or idea about the family so you can incorporate, incorporate all this information in your psychosocial analysis then come the uh, uh, community level information so community always serves let me look into the time okay i have 15 more minutes so community always serve as a, a, a source of secondary support uh, what is important about uh, secondary support is like you no know, most of the time uh, the secondary supports uh, are not very spontaneous or secondary support also can be called as formal support so second uh, sorry tier, sorry i was talking about tertiary support okay so community or society is always a source of tertiary support or a formal support what is important or you must understand about the formal support system is they are not spontaneous in nature family support primary and second primary support systems are spontaneous like whenever patient has a problem or a needs family spontaneously come they themselves identify and, and and come forward and help them that is called spontaneous on the other hand families uh, tertiary support systems are not spontaneous they won't come forward and assertively they won't come and help on the other hand you may have to pay for it or there is a procedure or formality that has to be followed to avail a community a community resources or formal source of support so assessing and identifying the society or the, the community from where this person is have coming and what are the resources or formal or uh, informal support that is available in the community and what is the for procedure formality that has to be followed to avail the support is uh, is very important so try to identify and understand this process and formalities a simple example which i can give is like you know um, a dhmhb program so now district mental health program is covered most of the districts it is always a good idea to understand and verify whether that dmhb program is available in the community i'm just giving an example and what is the procedure and formalities to be uh, to be followed to uh, avail the services of the dmhb whom to contact where to go which day to go what are things they like to carry when they go and see the, the you know the, the team so that they get a, a free services in the community so i'm giving a single example to understand what i'm what i'm trying to say so uh, this is for, very important in your assessment and I, so in, in the community level identify what are the resources available i have given some examples what is a, you do have to look at the availability formalities and procedure in your assessment process you can use a venn diagram simple example i am giving a venn diagram to formally or systematically assess there are different ways to identify the community resources and services so these are the broader areas and uh, subdomains that you can look into when you carry out a psychosocial assessment 
once you carry out a psychosocial assessment that has to lead into a psychosocial analysis which is called synthesis put all this information together about information information about the illness person family and society and synthesize put together analyze uh, uh, like you know you are uh, like a like a mixage are you you put everything mix it together and make a uh, try to make a logical connection or or a, 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 a possible meaning how they are all interconnected Uh, so that uh, uh, you will have a fair idea about why this person developed an illness and why he is continue to have the illness and how the family individual personal and community factors playing a pivotal role in this process that is called your psychosocial analysis your psychosocial analysis will deal into some kind of psychosocial diagnosis or diagnosis where there are different ways you can uh, diagnosis uh, there are multi axis diagnosis that is specified in icd 10 as well as dsm you can easily utilize that for your uh, diagnosis so you can uh, in each axis you can diagnose you can specify uh, the uh, illness or the psychosocial problems those diagnosis or inferences will give you some kind of long time and short time objective for intervention so what are the areas need to be covered immediately and long time that that uh, constitute your long time as well as short time goals according to your short term and long term goal you will have to spe uh, 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 devise specific approach as well as specific intervention strategies so there is a logic and connection between your psychosocial assessment diagnosis and your intervention this is theoretically theoretically what is called psychosocial assessment i will stop after giving a small um, a case uh, report also um, it's a very very simple uh, case report to understand Mr A is a uh, 26 not 226 okay typing error a role hindu male educated up to puc he did not have any family or relatives when he he was a, a supervisor in a car showroom he lost his uh, job on week past for the last 6 month the patient started consuming alcohol along with friends initially it was taking minimal amount now it is amounting to uh, uh, um, uh, dependency according to the patient he started feeling low sadness uh, death wishes suicidal ideas and there were uh, previous uh, one failed suicide attempt also he had an interpersonal problem in the workplace because of which he lost his job now he is unemployed and uh, how he reached in the hospital because somebody saw him he was walking in the in the in the railway track which he was intended to die and somebody identified and handed over him to the police and police brought him to the him to the hospital and the mental status examination showed uh, a depressive cognition help uh, and uh, suicidal ideas along with that he had uh, suicidal so i am just giving a very brief idea about some of the information so this is a very uh, in, uh, minimal information or first hand information your assessment can go more, more deeper that is called Uh, 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 assessment is an ongoing process now we are making a, uh, a working hypothesis so minimal information about that with that information you can make some high, kind of hypothesis or hypothesis analysis what is happening to this person those analysis can be a verbatim or you can make a diagrammatic representation of your uh, psychosocial analysis so uh, maybe he, uh, he was abandoned by the family members so he doesn't have any family members and he was telling some of the family members how mental illness so family member of mental illness and our adverse childhood experience not having from family members and born uh, brought up in a, in a, in an uh, orphanage that is a vulnerable uh, adverse childhood experience that might have made him vulnerable to develop mental illness and current stressors like you no know, loss of job financial problems substance use and poor support for, uh, from family or the workplace he doesn't have such kind of any support system that might have made uh, uh, those kind of stress and the vulnerability made together led into and his uh, 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 the age factor also may, might have made him vulnerable and that led into the onset of the illness that is called uh, uh, maybe a depression and uh, and this uh, the depression is maintained by again maintained by uh, the poor support system and what is helping him is like you know, availability of treatment at other community services those uh, like you know tertiary support system like the you know, police and other ngo people and the hospital are a protective factor for him so that you no know, he is getting some kind of services so that is going to be a protective factor so that protective factor may help him 
to recover or uh, relapse or or uh, um, deal with the functionality of the person so try to make a, this kind of an analysis a, a meaning out of the assessment so that that will help you to form your diagnosis and management plan so our assessment may help us this kind of diagnosis or access one may be severe depressive disorder so he is having a, a, a severe dysfunction now and other uh, areas uh, di uh, diagnostic uh, um, areas uh, psychosocial diagnosis set category living alone loss of la love relationship in childhood inadequate parental supervision control absence of family members alcohol use personal history of self harm so these are the other areas need to be addressed i'm just giving a very brief idea okay, okay. then that will help us to make some kind of yeah. long Im immediate task well as long term goal so he is suicidal also having yeah. suicidal yeah. ideas yeah. perceived symptom uh, motivation adherence to the treatment because and long term plan will be residential vocational and enhanced support so this is the way then you have you may have to plan specific intervention this is a brief case example to uh, give an idea about how to go about psychosocial assessment to conclude assessment and formulation of the client or a situation are the essential element that mark a thoughtful approach to the client care this process has been shaped over time by challenges in orientation to knowledge new theories new practices and politic as well as institutional pressure so many factors will uh, influence our assessment our uh, our knowledge our skill our theoretical orientation our uh, political and cultural understanding many things will influence the uh, uh, assessment process but assessment is a very integral part in our uh, psychosocial intervention or management of the client so i will uh, stop here